Hi everyone, I'm so glad we're back together. I have to send again my sincere love and um, thanks for your patience um, while I spent the last week or so focusing on health, family, and work. Um, but I'm back now um, and hopefully we can fit a few more in um, before the end of the school year. Um, and if not, I'll try to do some more over the summer as well because you know what? I love this. It's so much fun for me and I hope it is for you as well. So. Tonight, we are going to be finishing up Secrets of the Vegetable Garden, and we're going to be remembering what made a habitat special. So those four things, do you remember? It's been a little bit, that make a habitat a home for an animal. What do the animals need to live? So let's see if we remember some of them. Are you ready? Animals need food. Dun, 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 dun. Animals need water. Dun, 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 dun. Animals needed shelter. Remember, something to protect them from weather or hot or cold, maybe even a predator. Yeah, shelter, a place to live that's safe and cozy and comfortable. And this was the tough one. Do you remember this one? Space. They need space. Space to find their food and water and shelter. Space that fits them as an animal. <coughs> That's big enough and has everything it need. So, animals need food, water, <laughs> water, shelter, space. Food, water, shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space. Okay, should we dive right into the book before we meet? I brought four animals with me today, and the animals that we have today all share a special habitat. Remember last time we saw animals live in the rainforest. We saw Palpatine, the Emperor Scorpion. We saw the poison dart frogs, and who else do we see? Sunday! Yeah, that's right. Sunday came back to visit. Sunday, the goth and cockatoo, all from a rainforest habitat. So today our animals are from a desert habitat. So a whole lot less water than a rainforest habitat. And some of them, you know, you know, it's interesting. We talk about all animals needing water. Now, at least one of my animals today doesn't actually drink water like we would think. I don't put any water dishes in for them because they get their water from the food they eat. Yeah, so we'll talk about that later, I promise. So let's get right back into it. Let's get back into maybe a habitat that you would find outside of your house, maybe in a garden nearby. Maybe we talked about even like the crack of a sidewalk or a little patch of green growing up from, from the street or sidewalk area. No matter where you are, there's gotta be some kind of a habitat there. So keep your eyes open and look for different types of habitats and animals living in them while you're outside. So, Secrets of the Vegetable Garden by Karen Brown and Giordano Polani. Where were we? Oh, I think I remember. I think we went to the tools, right? Yeah, and let's see. Let me let's not give you a peek and see if we got to this one yet. I don't know. I don't know. Let's start with this one right here. New leaves on the tomato plant reach up towards the sun. Who is sheltering under the leaves? We may have done this one, I'm not sure. So let's see, I have a stronger flashlight today, so I'm hoping it makes it better. <gasps> Whoa, who is that sheltering under the leaves? <gasps> is there another one? Oh, who is that? What do you think? Two ladybugs, insects have flown to the green leaves. They are spotted beetles with wings. Ladybugs, I love ladybugs. I even have a ladybug tattoo, but I won't show you because my legs are really hairy. Let's see. Silky threads, hmm, I wonder who has silky threads. Catch the light. Who could have made this web? Let's see if we remember. Would it be an insect with six legs? and three body parts? Or could it perhaps be, <gasps> who's that? What do you think? Spin, 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 a spider and a arachnid. Eight legs, 
and two body parts and two little parts. A spider pulls silk from inside her body to weave a web. The silk is sticky and strong to catch insects for her dinner. So this type of spider, maybe an orb web weaver, would spin a web. Remember what the tarantulas we saw, they didn't really spin a sticky web. They used their web kind of like an alarm. So if something walked on it, it moved, it vibrated. They didn't get stuck though. Anywho, the pitter patter of rain falls to the soil and plants, helping them to grow. Which animals feed in the rain? What a great question. That's a question I, I would love to know the answer to. Hmm. Let's see, who might we find? See who's around in the rain. Is it hard to see? I don't know. Oh, there's somebody. Oh, who might that be? Let's look over here. Do you see anybody? Oh, who's that? Who's, oh, there's somebody else. What do you think? Who do you think? Let's see if we can make it. No, that's not really gonna help. Let's see. Let's see. Snails and slugs. And some of you know, sometimes worms too, come out in the rain. It's easy for them in the rain to scoot around. They eat the leafy vegetables. Wow, so cool. So that's a great, great thing to look for when you're out in your garden or a park nearby looking for habitats to look around where things might be wet and slimy. What might be there? Gardeners do not like animals eating the vegetables. Hmm, who would have thunk? But you know what? I love insects and other animals in my garden. That tells me that my garden's alive and insects help the plants to grow. So I like to build a garden or have a place nearby where the animals and the plants can all live together. And if they eat some, that's fine. I'll have others. Anywho, they can protect the plants with special sprays or nets. Sprays I don't recommend, but nets, okay, you can protect your plants with nets. That's a great idea. What's inside this cloche? Let's see, what could be growing in there? Let's see, what do you see? Oh, look at that. Ooh, that looks like leafy green goodness. And huh, who's that up there? Who's that up there? Tap, tap. It's lettuce. <laughs> the gardener has covered it to protect it from slugs and snails. Wow, what a great harmonious way to do it. And it doesn't hurt the snails or slugs. I like that one. I like that because you know what? As we're talking about habitats, all animals are gonna need food. And maybe they're gonna get their water from the lettuce too and, and shelter and space, yeah. so. That's not anything that they're doing wrong. It's what they're doing that they need to stay alive and to stay healthy. They're going to find food. It's not their fault. It's what they do. It's what we all do. We all have to work together. Okay. Small insects called aphids like to eat the juicy leaves, but another animal likes to eat the aphids. Can you see what it is? I like to call that a beneficial insect or a beneficial pest, some people call them. But that's, oh, this is not what I thought it was. I'll tell you what I thought. I thought it was the ladybug again, because ladybugs love to munch on aphid. But look at this. This was unexpected. <gasps> no, my flashlight, whoa, disco, disco. I was saying, I thought my flashlight was dying. Whoa. There we go. Can you see who it is? Hmm, let's see, I see something hiding back there. I don't know, this one, I see a shape, I see feet. Oh, let's see. Russell. Birds like this thrush. Thrush, peck insects off the plants. Yeah, so you know what? Having insects in your garden is a great thing because then the insects can help feed the birds. The circle of life. No, no. <laughs> The tomato plant has grown flowers. Bees carry pollen from flower to, from one flower to another. This helps the tomatoes grow. Where is the pollen? Ooh, what a great, what a great question. Hmm, pollen, I wonder if that's food for anyone. Let's see. 
Oh no, I think my flashlight is dying. I think it's dying. No, flashlight, no! Let's see. Brr, shake it, shake it. Oh, who's that? I see some cool stripes and some cool wings. Wow, let's see. Let's see. A bumblebee, one of my favorites. Outside in my garden, I love to make homes for bumblebees and other solitary nesting bees like mason bees. Oh, they make me so happy and bring me so much joy. A bumblebee picks up sticky pollen on its furry body. It visits the sweet smelling flowers to sip nectar. Oh, how wonderful. Food, water, shelter, space. I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing that we have a, a few pages left. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna pause there, which will give me another excuse to come back so we can finish it. Because I have like, Four animals today if we can get to them and I'm looking at the time and seeing we're going we're going longer so we're gonna do the speedy meet the animals version so let's see some desert animals but before we do tie it all together we got to remember those four things that make a habitat special let's think there may have been some in that book I think we did see some food and some water um, and the bees I talked about I love to leave plant stems and little bee houses for them to go in as their shelter okay so food water shelter space Food, water, shelter, space. Food, water, shelter, space. Food, water, shelter, space. Food, water, shelter, space. Okay. I wasn't going to start with this animal, but this animal has been out running around and he looks like he's getting into all kinds of mischief. So I'm going to, I'm going to scooch over and grab my first desert animal, my first desert habitat animal for you to meet because I think he's going to get into some trouble. So let me get him. Okay. Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Okay. So. Do you remember Loki? Here's Loki. Loki was the bearded dragon. The bearded dragon from Australia. Yeah. And Loki comes from a desert habitat. And Loki's food that he likes to eat with us are, he loves crickets. He literally loves anything that moves and he can eat, but we feed him a lot of crickets. Um, and sometimes he gets some nice soft worms, like wax worms or something to, as a treat. Um, but he also likes salads. And salads are where he gets a lot of his water. He also drinks water. Yeah. And let's see. In his habitat, um, he's going to use a lot of the sun because he's ectothermic to get all of his energy. He was full of energy today. He was running all around my living room. So when I have him as my pet, when I take care of him, I have to give him a nice light that's kind of like sunlight that keeps him warm, and gives him energy as part of his space. And I also give him plenty of places to climb. He loves to climb. In fact, since we're gonna be just about done with Loki, the bearded dragon, who was a reptile with scales and shed skin. And we were so ectothermic. Whoa, okay, Loki, whoa. He's like, I'm done, see ya. My time's up. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm going to see. Maybe he'll be cooperative enough to sit on my shoulder while we do the next couple animals. But I doubt it. He might run off. So we'll try. We'll try. There he goes. All right. We'll put Loki up on my shoulder. So we'll say, good night, Loki. Okay. Let's see who's next. Ooh, these guys. These are one of my favorites. We've done these guys a couple times. I have favorites. Don't touch me. Don't tell Loki. He's one of my favorites, too. Do you remember these guys? let's see in their desert habitat now these are the animals that I do not give any water to in fact if I did my little blue friend here would turn black yeah the water would kind of tip whoa perfect no nope, not gonna play dead would kind of wash away temporarily that kind of bluey waxy coating and he would he would turn black for about two weeks until he dried out um, they like to have some moisture from time to time, but they get it from a lot of their food. I feed them different jellies and little salads. Sometimes I give them cat food. But this was the death feigning beetle. What is he? What is he? He's an insect head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and sometimes wings. And he had six legs and two antenna. So there's the death feigning beetle. Let's see, so that was a blue one. Is he gonna hold on? Let's see, he might fall, but we'll see. And then while I have him out, I've 
got the black death feigning beetle. The blue and the black. Let's see if he plays dead. He's usually really good at playing dead. In fact, he'll probably do it and stay dead for quite a while. Yep. Okay, so let's see if I can find a smooth before I put these guys away. Oh, here's a smooth. Here's a smooth. Oh, he'll probably play dead too. Yep, yep, yep. So blue, I'm gonna move him over. I'm just nervous he's gonna fall. I'm gonna set these guys down here. Brr. So the blue, who's running, running, running. And oh, the black just flipped over. He's like, I'm done playing dead. You're not falling for it. And then the smooth is currently doing his best impression of being dead. Death feigning beetles or death pretending or death faking beetles. And these guys, remember I said we're from the like, deserts of the United States. Yeah, so out like Southwest, like Arizona, New Mexico. Woo! I've got beetles falling all over. So this guy, since he's, yeah, I told you the beard dragon's gonna run. He's gonna run right off my back. So while he's doing a good job of playing dead, there's, the, oh, he's starting to move. He's starting to move his little legs. There's the smooth death feigning beetle. So black, blue, and smooth. Whoa! All over my hand there's black, blue, smooth, death feigning beetles, insects from the desert habitat. So I'm gonna stick these guys back. I'm gonna put their lid on. And I figured in between every two animals, four things that make a habitat special that they all need in their desert habitat. They need food, they need water, they need shelter and space. Okay, moving on, moving on. Time's running out. Okay. Oh, here's another one of my favorites. Okay. This was Oreo. Do you remember Oreo? I'm gonna have to dig for. Let's see. Oreo. Oreo needs to get a mouse soon because Oreo's favorite food is baby mice. He usually gets like three baby mice every like week or two. It's just about time. Let's see. Where's my Oreo? Dig, dig, dig. So I'm gonna show you if I can once I take all his little water dishes out, water, and his little his little shelter out. I made him. He's got a little, a little hide shelter that if he wants keeps a little bit of extra moisture. But Loki likes to hide and dig, and this is kind of like a cocoa fiber. Um, I don't want to give him sand because it could kind of maybe get in his tummy. Um, but let's see. Let me see if I can dig for him. Mm, Oreo. Oh, I feel him. There's my Oreo. There he is. There he is. There he is. Okay. Okay. There's my Oreo. Oreo is my baby Kenyan Samboa. Yeah. What kind of animal? A snake. But a reptile. A reptile shed skin. In fact, it's probably time for him to shed skin soon. He sheds it a lot. Shed skin. He's ectothermic. He likes to stay warm. There's a. I have kind of a, a, a heating strip um, that usually goes on one corner of his habitat, and that's where he can go to get nice and warm. And because he's ectothermic, it'll help him digest his food, keep his body temperature up. And there's that tongue that I love that he smells with. And that cool, if you can see his cool, he's got kind of like a shovel-shaped nose that helps him dig. And it's kind of silly. Not a lot of snakes are, are like this, but he actually, kind of like an amphibian, his eyes are situated somewhat towards the top so that when he's digging, the eyes might just stay up above the sand or wherever he is so that he can see his food come in. He might eat it. Of course, when I when I feed him, I take him out of his habitat because I want him to eat where I can see him, making sure he's eating well, and to kind of teach him that, you know, that's a place to eat. And you don't want to come after things that might be in your habitat, like my fingers. But he wouldn't. So there's Oreo. I guess his name because he kind of looks like he's a special color. If he was in the wild, his color might be more brown and the middle part might be a little bit more yellowy. Um, but he has a special color he's kind of missing. Um, kind of that yellow red pigment so yeah 
Michael Aaron. There he is. He's got great genetics. Okay, okay. One more. One of us. We're gonna put Oreo away all the way. Down. I don't like to put Oreo away. He's kind of one of my favorites. Oh God! Just look at the cuteness of Oreo. Okay. Oh, these desert, these desert animals just have my heart. All right. So he's gonna, he's gonna dig right back down. And if you can see him, digging, digging, digging. Let's see. Digging, digging, digging. You see him going, 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 going. Sometimes if I give him a little tickle, he might dig faster. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Yeah, it's gonna take too long. Okay, one more. Let me put Oreo's high back and his water, food, water, shelter space, and his lid. Because anybody who knows snakes knows that they are Houdinis. They are escape artists. And they will get out of anything. So, lid on tight. I've got Velcro straps to keep him extra tight. And our last animal that we're going to say goodnight to is another desert animal from the United States. So, we saw an Australian desert animal, an African desert animal, Kenyan desert animal. We saw a desert, desert insects from the United States. Here's another one from the United States. Let's see if you can tell what it is. Remember this guy? This little guy here, I can get him to come out. It doesn't really always have a name. Kids give him all kinds of different names. Finny. I call him Chubby sometimes. But here we go. Do you remember this guy? This special guy. Remember what he was? He was a tricky one. We could play, is it an insect or pfft, not an insect? What do you think? He's got these, oh, they look like antenna, but were they? Do you remember? Or were they special modified long legs? So look, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. And I see two body parts and look at those little, oh, those little pedipalps up front. Remember, he was an arachnid. This is our vinegaroon, our whip-tailed scorpion that might smell like vinegar if he wants to stay safe. Yeah. Also from the deserts of the United States. From Mexico, oh, from New Mexico and Arizona. Pretty cool. Desert habitat. So we're gonna end right here with the vinegaroon. And I'm gonna hold him while we say goodnight. But I want us to remember one last time, the four things that even though it's a desert and it might be not as easy to find as maybe a rainforest, might be more plentiful with lots of food and water um, and certainly shelter with all the plants, the desert is gonna be a little harder. But they have certain adaptations, things that help them to survive. Like look at that big abdomen where he can store food in there for a while until he finds his next one. So we're gonna end with him and help me remember those four things. We had food, water, whoa! Shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space. Yes, yes, yes. So we're gonna end right here and we're gonna say, good night, Vinegar Room. Good night, everyone. Thank you for staying with me for this extra long night. I love you, goodbye, goodbye, good night.